What's up everyone? This is Bianca Torres. I'm here at apartment 5H. I broke into Cell's house for some snacks, but they all expired, so there goes that. But we have a special guest today. We have Maleni. Eh, wait, where's the applause from the crowd? <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here today. Thank you for pulling up. So everyone may know you from the social media skits that you do with your fiance, Chicle, mm -hmm. but now you're on the Impact New York. Yes. So how has that transition been from like doing social media skits to reality TV? Um, the well, the fun thing about the skits is that I'm not too far from who I am. So. I was trying to remember to channel that on the show, but also showing different aspects of myself that you don't normally see on social media. Cause you know, you only really see me doing the skits. And there's m parts in my stories where I talk about like real things and show vulnerability in myself, but it was completely different like with the reality TV show because I'm like dealing with other people's personalities. Mm. You don't want to say the wrong thing. You don't, you, there's a lot that I can't control in it. And yeah, that was like really intense and like consistently thinking that I'm like, yo, be careful. You don't say something stupid because right. you can't delete it. Like it's out of my control. You know, it's not like on my phone where I can, yo, I don't like that. Delete it. Clear it. Right. Let's do it again. Let's put a filter. It's none of that. How you show up is how you show up and how they getting you is how they getting you. And it's. Girl, I'm still anxious about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, what is it? Episode three so far, right? Yeah. Episode three, Monday. When we when is drop? When is drop? We'll figure it out. But I know it's okay. every Monday at nine o'clock. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we we're gonna be going on to episode four, and now like the show is finally like picking up, and you're getting a little more about us, and there's a little more drama within the cast. Um. So yeah, that whole thing has been. Episode three was, I think, has to be my favorite so far. Why? Well, because it was mainly focused on me. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was heavy on my storyline and also Ashley, who was one of the other cast members. Um, and her story was beautiful. Like, she spoke yeah. about her dad, her relationship with her dad, and just how he wasn't there when she was younger, and she's asking him to be here now. And you're, like, still failing and still trying, you know, at the same time. So it was very touching, like, to mm -hmm. watch as a viewer. Because I don't know anything that happens. Okay. Like, we shoot it, they take it, they edit it, and then we watch it in real time with the world. So we be there like, oh, bitch, you said this about me? <laughs> and I, I'm like, oh, they chopped it up, bro. I don't know what the hell you... <laughs> You've been experiencing a lot of that? No, not me personally. Okay. But, I mean, I can't speak for nobody else. But it has, there has been things that, like, some people don't like the way things were said in interviews and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's really out of our control. Like, I can't... They'll take pieces that I wasn't expecting them to take. And okay. thank God I'm not saying nothing stupid, but that's how bad... It, that's how easy it is to be like, I'm not thinking that they're capturing this. And the minute I'm mic'd up, that's it. They're capturing it. Did you know that going into it? Like, were you like, okay, let me chill. Let me, like, be careful about what I say because I don't have control over it? Or is that something you learned along the way? It was, I knew it, but I didn't know it. Okay. Like, I didn't, like, there's this part, it was in, like, episode two where I'm in the car and I'm telling the driver to, like, oh, just go around the block, but the block is a one-way, so the, you got to you gotta make a left. Girl, it was a regular thing. I didn't think I was in scene. They put that shit on the TV. <laughs> I was like, well, that, imagine I was talking to somebody and be like, yo, let me tell you, that, that dumb ass bitch over here. They would have easily put that bitch in there. Yeah, I mean, when the mics are hot, mm -hmm. it's like anything you say goes. So They're you like, yeah, we careful. want that. We want it. Let's put it in. It's just something so simple and small as to me driving around the block and telling the driver that. I would never thought they kept that. Mm. <laughs> what kind of lessons have you learned from being on reality TV? I'm learning. I'm learning that it's okay for not everyone to like you. Okay. And not that anybody doesn't like me, but I get very anxious. Like, watching this show, I'm very anxious that I'm saying the wrong thing, that I'm going to offend somebody. Um, and I'm learning that I need to, like, I can't control how you're going to feel. Right. Like, I'm just not. And I, if I'm here, like, trying to console you, like, oh, my God, that's not what I meant. Like, that's not what it is. At one point, I have to wash my hands and be like, you know what? That's what you want to think. And I really don't like to think that way. 
because I've had people respond to me that way. Like, mm-hmm. if I feel like you did X, Y, and Z to me, and they're like, well, that's on you. And you're like, no, 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 but I'm telling you how, my fi- how, how I feel. Like, console me, give me right. something, you know? Because like, you would do that for them. Yeah, 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 right. I would. But now I'm like, you know what? I understand it. Because if I told you once that that's not how I meant to say it, and now you're choosing to continually think it that way, no, that's you. And I don't have a control on the opinion that you have on me. Because you're just going to consistently see that no matter what. You know? That's a good life lesson because I feel like I used to be the same way as you. Mm-hmm. Like I used to be like, oh my god, I hope I didn't offend this person. Or, and at at a certain point, you just be like, you know what? I said what I said, and I wasn't mm-hmm. trying to be, you know, malicious. But if that's how you're gonna take it, that's how you're gonna take it. Mm-hmm. I can't do anything about it. No you just gotta move on. You know, just gotta move on. Damn. I can't even sing, and I'm over here trying to sing. Well, <laughs> wait a minute, because you have other, you do other things, right? So you're acting. Yes. So tell us about that. Have you always wanted to act? Is that something that you just came upon? No, I've always I've always been a little performer. Okay. Um, when I was like in middle school, that's when I like first joined the drama club. I did that for like about a year, and then I focused on dancing. And then when I was in like high school, my physics teacher was like, "Oh, let's make a movie." So there's like a movie in there. So I've always I'm a performer. I've always been like a performer. Um, but my background was dance. And I just kept finding ways back into acting. And then when me and Cheeklet started focusing on content, it felt like just improv. It just felt like different versions of myself Mm -hmm. and just showcasing that and like really building a personality on social media, you know? So it was at a point where I was like, you know what? This is actually something that I really want to do. And I've dreamt of getting awards when I was younger, but you know, your bitch ain't Beyonce, so I knew I wasn't gonna get. <laughs> I knew I wasn't gonna get no Grammy. I was like, yeah, damn it. What can but I do? Ne- what other but, awards can but, I win? But you never know. But you never. You know. never know. You never know. I mean, some people won Grammys this time around, and they were at it for about a good ten. Years. First of all, hold on. I'm gonna take Celsi because he's not even here. I'm crying. So. Take his seat. Take his seat. This is where get I. Closer to this me. is where I really belong. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so you did you did have a scene with your sister. You mm-hmm. were dancing, and yeah. so you explored a little bit about that. So, first of all, wait a minute, back up. Did you like my dance moves? First of all, you was just you Yo, know, you pop saw that shit, right? I saw what you, you were doing. Saw what you were doing. <laughs> but I want to get into you. you. You did a performance too on from the block. You were rapping. Oh yes, yes, yes. So you a rapper now? Like no, I'm not. A, I'm not a rapper. Oh okay. But, I mean. I said this shit before. All I need is a is a ghost rider. That's all I need. But y'all heard but, her. Because I mean, the flow in. be hitting and the and the performance be. And you got the moves. You got the moves. I'm saying. <laughs> no, um, the four my block was a uh, promo that we did. I was in the studio, okay. wrote some shit, and uh, it was to promote the impact specifically. So I'm not, I'm not trying to get in the lane of rapping right now. I'm really trying to focus on this acting career and like step my foot in that door. Mm-hmm. And then maybe when I'm 40, but I think by then it's a little too late to try to be a rapper. I don't think so, because you see, no, you know what the dope thing is, is nowadays is different from even 10 years ago. I feel like older rappers, they're getting the appreciation that they deserve. Mm. So it used to be like a young man's game or young woman. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, but I feel like now it's not even like that. You'll see people like the older rappers are getting their recognition and people continue to try and they break out later now. So I think that is very true. Right. So it's never too yeah. late. It's yeah. never too late. It is never too late. What kind of acting do you want to do, though? I want to do comedy. I want to do action okay. comedy. Um, I'm. It's very easy for me to tap into the aggression mm-hmm. to that to the character I've been playing on social media. It comes naturally to you. I'm not gonna lie. Yo, it's been eight years now. <laughs> <laughs> it comes naturally that, to you. The Dominican in me, the New Yorker in me. That shit is easy. Like, what the fuck is you saying? Right. Watch your mouth. You know, it comes very easy, so I feel like that's second nature. But I like what I'm really aspiring to do mm-hmm. is is comedy and like action comedy and like do movies like that. And, action comedy. Yeah. You trying to like? I'm trying. I'm jump trying off to, of shit. I, yeah, I'm trying to be getting the bad guy. Oh, okay. With my partner in crime, and we both like horrible at the job or something. Like, <laughs> Actually, I can see you do something <laughs> like that. Where we keep cracking the like, I'm telling him like, "Yo, get the fucking get, get it together, bro." We letting this man get away. I could see you, know? you doing some shit like that, actually. That's perfect. Right? I'm going to write the role. You should. Yeah. Why not? I be slacking. That's what it is. Because, like, I, in talking about me rapping, I was like, 
It's so funny because I'm watching other stars on the impact, you know, Dream Doll. Mm -hmm. Dream Doll specifically. She raps, she acts, she does like multiple things, and she doesn't feel like she needs to be in one specific lane in order to do other lanes. Right. You know, so why do I feel like, oh, I can only rap, I can only act right now and not drop songs every now and then, like as a fun thing? Because I have fun, like, doing it in the Mm -hmm. studio, you know? And. I think I did, you know, it was a fun little thing, and I, th- I think I did a good job, you know? My you performance did. was a 10 out of 10. I mean, you <laughs> I, said it. I had them angry in the comments, though. That shit was hilarious. No, people were trying to figure it out, too. That's why I was like, let me ask her if she's going to be a... Because people were like, is she rapping now? What is she doing? You mm-hmm. have people confused. Yo, I did. I, I mean, you're always going to have haters, though. Some of the, some, they didn't like it. Some people didn't like it. Mm. But it's all right. You don't have to like it. It's not for everyone. <laughs> I mean... Mm. So I want to get into your relationship. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, how do you balance working with your fiance? Because it's hard, right? You live together, you're working together. Like, how do you find a balance with that? <coughs> My bad, I almost died. How do I find, I act like I don't answer this question every single time, but I'm trying to find like a, I find new things in it. It's never mm-hmm. an easy, like, it's never easy because we have two different ways of working and we have two different ways of thinking. Like, mm-hmm. Our mentalities are completely different. We clash heads a lot. So it's always like about separating for a little bit, giving each other space, and then coming back to be like, all right, what's going on with you in terms of the relationship? Because that's Mm -hmm. the first thing. That's the most important thing overall, you know? So how can we like better communicate? It's always like, it's always a working, it's always a working thing. Cause who was it that spoke to me about? I don't know. That shit don't matter. Um, But we was talking to somebody and they compared it like, you go home and you don't got to see none of these motherfuckers' faces. Right. I go home after work, I got to see that motherfucker's face. I can't talk to my man and be like, yo, let me tell you what that motherfucker Chiclet did to me at work at the podcast. You know, I go home and I see my damn coworker. So, you know, you kind of hold on to things and it strains your relationship at times. So it's like very important to be like, you know what? We had a we had a, at one point we had to get a therapist. Okay. Like we recently started getting into therapy because we were just like this, all about a conversation about manifestation. I swear to God. Mm. <laughs> so because you, you that plays out on the show too, the difficulties. So mm-hmm. that's like real. No, yeah, no. Yeah. Me and Chica, we definitely like bump heads um, in real life. Okay. Like he he is the reason I am who I am today because he pushes me consistently. Mm-hmm. Because he's like, Melanie, you're slacking. Like you're not doing shit. And I'm listen, look at me. I, I I am who I am on social media. You can't tell me that. I don't give a damn if I am slacking. I don't wanna fucking hear it. And yeah. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. And because this is what I'm called I feel called to do. I, if I feel called to do nothing all day, then that's what I'm gonna do. I don't wanna hear you telling me that I'm not doing nothing. I, yeah, I don't care, you know? So it's never it's never easy, but we are working on it like consistently and at the end of the day, we choose each other and that's like the most important thing. Yeah, I mean, in a way, it's kind of like good that you go through that, right? Because if you're gonna marry someone, you have to be able to get over the humps. Relationships are not easy. Whether you're married, whether you're together a long time, you know, there's a lot of shit that you have to, overcome oh man oh tell me about it you know being, being with him for eight years i feel like we already married I of feel course like we, yeah like now it's just about celebrating the love because this relationship was committed from the beginning and we were you know we chose each other from the start so the moments where we felt like if there was any ever if there was ever any moment where we felt like you know what this isn't working out it, that never happened. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we was like, no, nah, I choose you over and over again. We're, we don't even have to. We're not forced. Right. You know, we're not forced to do that because we're married. We're, you right. got to go through legal things in order to separate. Right. Nah, we could walk away from each other. You know what? I'm a liar. <laughs> I mean, when you live with someone and you were together a yeah, long time, it's exactly. harder to walk away. It's not just like, and that's what other people think, right? They're mm-hmm. like, oh, but you're not married. You could walk away. Yeah. Just because we're not married doesn't mean that it's going to be easy to walk away. You still build a life. And as I was saying it, I was thinking about that shit. Because I, I remember many times in like a fight, real quick, a fight. I'm like, you know what? I'm done with this shit. Fuck this shit. I'm like, damn, my plants. <laughs> my plants. What am I gonna do with my plants? I have to find an apartment. My stuff. Who gets the TV? 
who gets the dog like the dog is a big deal too the dog is mine automatically I'm just, but it's still it's still like you know yeah it's still you gotta be work. a single dog mom and then who gets the followers like who's now is a divorce on social media like it's a lot but i mean we never yeah. really we never really let that and we never let, really let the relationship get that far we chose each other regardless mm -hmm. of the obstacles of what would happen um but yeah you know that thought be coming up in her head Fuck out of here. Where am I, who, who, where am I doing my plans? You know what? Let me resolve this fight. Yeah, no, yeah, listen. It, it's, it's not that easy. I mean, again, you don't have to go through the, the lawyers, and it's not as strenuous to mm -hmm. remove yourself from a situation if you don't sign that paper, but emotionally? Oh, yeah. Because I was in a long relationship, too, so I know what that, like, that emotionally, that's a big, you know, it's a big change in life, yeah. so. So um, how did you guys meet? How did we meet? Um... I see the McDonald's packet here. And I yeah. feel like telling the fake story. The fake like, story. The fake story is uh, I w he was working at McDonald's. And, <laughs> That's uh, a fake story? Yeah. <laughs> Why is it fake? Because <laughs> it never happened. <laughs> Tell me the real. Tell me the real. I want the real. The fake is about to be funny, yeah. but I want the real. <laughs> the real story was we have a mutual friend, and they were, all, they were planning on going out. Um, <laughs> I didn't know he was going out. I just knew the friends that I knew that were going out. So I go to this EDM basement party, and I'm there first. So they call me, and they're like, yo, we're trying to figure out what party to go to. Uh, how's that party? Is it lit? And I look around, and I'm like, yeah, it's lit. Come over here now. This shit is mad lit. I hang up. That shit was not lit. <laughs> that shit was not lit. I knew that party wasn't gonna be lit, but I was damned if they thought they were gonna go to another party after having me pull up to this one, and then I gotta go to the other party and hang out with my friends. Yeah, no, y'all still coming over here. Okay. Taking so, them down with you. <laughs> yo, so they get there, and Chiclet, he's like, yo, to the mutual friend, he's like, yo, who's the bitch that told you this party was lit? And my friend, he knows me. He knows how I am already. So he points like mad nervously at me. <laughs> he goes, Chicle goes, yo, I don't fuck with you, bro. I said, yo, I don't fuck with you either. So then we kept making jokes about fighting towards the end of the night. But I ended up leaving in like nah, less than an hour I left. I danced a few little bachatas. Because this was not an EDM party. This was a Spanish party in disguise. That's what the fuck it was. Okay. So that's what pissed them off also as well. Okay. There's only dudes at this party. Mm, They're so not playing try. EDM. There's... It's me, my sister, and maybe another few girls. That's how many people is at this party. <laughs> Bro. That's competition. No, I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so after that, um, I always hang out with my friend. He invited him to, like, a Buffalo Wild Wings we was going to eat. I swore he knew about it. Come to find out, Chicklet didn't know about it. He, was, he didn't know I was going to come. So he gets, like, kind of blindsided that I'm there, me and my cousin. And I'm like, yo, this my friend was fucking trying to set us up or something? Because now I'm trying to figure it out. Like, oh, maybe he did all along one of the hookers. It sounds like up, it. Right? He fucking told him I wasn't going to be there. Told me he was. I'm on to him. It sounds like it. But, yeah, that's how we met. That was the, the start. <laughs> <laughs> it, exactly like what goes on on social media, that's exactly how you met. It's on brand for y'all. No, it's hilarious. <laughs> on brand for you. So what kind, like, you've obviously been able to grow with each other, right? Because that's the key also to being in a healthy, long relationship is like, you know, people do change. And as you're, you're growing, the person grows with you. Mm -hmm. So well, you hope that they grow with you. You hope, right. Yeah. But, but usually, usually that's the reason why you're still together is because you kind of water each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what kind of advice would you give to other people who are in like newer relationships and probably need a little like advice from someone who's been, you've been together what, eight years? Yeah, eight years. I'm trying, yeah, we've been together eight years. Yeah, I got, I got one when I was 22. Yeah, that's the math. So my advice is to forget the limelight, just make love while we listen to Frank Wright. Oh. This is what I, that's not the lyric. That's not. <laughs> It sound good, though. You don't know that song? Of course I do. All right, stop playing. Of course I do. <laughs> Matter of fact, shout out to Chastity. She about to do something big with that. Hey, are you really? Yeah. Get out of here. The alarm and me singing that. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, I got you. <laughs> you're going to be there, too. <laughs> um, no, but for real, my advice to young couples. Um, damn, I'm trying, I'm trying to. I'm like, I'm like the worst. 
Cause forever, for whatever advice I give, there's also the counter advice that I think in my head. Cause I would like to say like, well, my advice is to one, communicate. Communication is the key, but you need to allow each other to grow. You can't be in a long-term relationship if you're looking for a way out or you're like one foot in the door, one foot out the door. Like you can't be complaining about your partner and then wanting to stay with them. Like mm -hmm. that just doesn't work. Now you're just going to be miserable and forcing yourself in a relationship. Right. So if you're really going to be in a relationship and commit to this person, love them. Why not make a choice to be happy in that relationship, especially if you don't want to walk away from it? I think a lot of the times, like, we want to, like, we'll be so annoyed at our partners, and you don't want to let go of what they did because it hurt you. Mm -hmm. Small or big or whatever the fucking case may be. And then you realize, like, damn, I'm miserable in this relationship, but you love this person. At one point or the next, you need to decide, like, oh, you really leaving? Or are you going to change this relationship? Like, I had to change narratives many times within my relationship. Because I kept seeing him for little... Me and, me and Chicka, we get into, like, little arguments. But because we work together, live together, like, see each other consistently, mm -hmm. you know, these things build up. So, we'll be, like, shooting at each other, like, oh, you fucking dumbass bitch, look what the fuck you did. And that builds up, you yeah. know? And so, I realized that I had this narrative towards him and he's still trying like he's still giving me kisses and making me breakfast Aww. and I'm like why am I so angry at this man when he's still making an effort into our relationship so I That's had nice a lot of men don't do that a lot mm -hmm. of men will let their ego take over oh yeah um so yeah I had a I had a I was like you know throw that shit up Melanie okay make that choice to be happy in this relationship and not hold him against what they did because you have to, you either forgive or move forward. Mm -hmm. I hope that was clear. That was clear. Okay, good. That was very clear. <laughs> so I know, I see, I feel like you're trying to break out as an individual because everyone knows you as Chicle and Maleni. Mm -hmm. So what made you want to start doing that, like start your own brand in a sense? Well, I had my, dream, my dreams of, of being an actress. Okay. Chicle don't want that for himself. Okay. Like he... Um, He's not a performer like I am. Like we used to do hostings and I'll get on stage and it was like a whole, like now it's a whole show. Like this is where you see me shine, mm -hmm. right? When I'm performing. And so I realized, like I love working with Chicla. You know, I love the content we do. Um, I would never stop doing that because, you know, it really brings joy to my heart. Mm -hmm. And I love the comedy we do. Um, but... I have bigger dreams for myself and I if I allowed the, our relationship and what we do to like keep me stuck in it, I don't think I will ever like I wouldn't forgive myself in 40 mm -hmm. when I'm like 40 and I'm like damn, I had the chance to fucking focus on this career and I didn't. Like I had like when I was younger and I thought about performing and acting and getting awards, I would have never thought that I would be in the position where I'm able to reach that, where I'm in the steps, like you're in the you're on the ladder, and you're like, oh yeah, I could actually I could actually do that. So I felt like this was now the perfect opportunity, the perfect time for me to actually take those steps and do it. Well, you're from East New York, right? Mm -hmm. I think that even for me, because I'm from the Bronx, right? And I Ew. think growing up, <laughs> um, I think growing up in certain environments, right? It's like you always hope that you can make it to a certain level, mm. but you don't really see people that come from where we come from, especially mm. women, make it. We have we have J Lo. Shout out to J Lo. Shout out to J Lo. But you don't really see that representation. So it's like, and even especially if you go into like public schooling, and you know you're not going to the greatest schools, and you know even your surroundings, like you hope that you can make it, but it doesn't really seem feel, like it's feasible. <clears throat> I feel like that's the greatest thing though, that you haven't seen somebody like you make it. Right. Because now it just shows me that there isn't a spot. There's a spot that I could fill. Mm -hmm. I'm not somebody else. True. I'm, you know, there is like now I can, now there's a chance for me to like where are the Dominican actor actresses? Right. There is none. There is, there is but there's not none in like mainstream right. media. Um, it's not on Front Street. Yeah, it's not. And um, 
So that just means that there's an opportunity for that. There's an opportunity for a comedian to come out who's who's been an influencer, who's from East New York, who you know, who's Dominican, who you know, mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z, all the criteria that I make. <laughs> <laughs> but that just means that there's that was for me to make. You know, that's the way I look at it. No, I mean it. It it's kind of like it makes you feel like it's meant to be. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, because I'm, no, I'm, I'm nobody else. Because if I was trying to feel like, if they're looking for another J-Lo, well, I'm not J-Lo. Mm -hmm. You know? Even though we do have some similarities other than... She, I mean, I see mm -hmm, it. Dancer. She came from a dancer background. True. Went into acting. True. Stepped into singing. Hold on, let me get my vocals ready then. <laughs> I mean, where's the engineer? Where's the producer? <laughs> where's that? Where's my songwriters? I know she has some. <laughs> <clears throat> but <laughs> we're not throwing shade at the queen. We're not no, 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 never. It's just a, you know. might be right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. It's never shade. It's an industry. It's a job. It, no, listen. It is what it, a lot of people have writers. Mm -hmm. A lot of your favorite rappers have writers. That's yes. It's in, it's it, as an artist, you can't, you cannot, you cannot have longevity without a team. Like you just can't. Absolutely. And and like if you're focusing as the person who's the face, you're focusing on X, Y, and Z. You're focusing on a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. You think you have the creative juices to be writing and in the to be in tune with the world right now? No, no, no. Not you need you need yeah. you need people to help you to support you creatively. And not to say that they have all the credit, but there's other people in the room helping you. Yeah, we have this conversation often, especially when it comes to rappers too. Um, I have this conversation with self often. It's like, you know, when people first start out, it's like they're hungry, right? So you hear it in their music. And as they evolve, you know, they're not hungry anymore. So I, someone like a Drake, for instance, like I can mm -hmm. understand why he has ghostwriters because it's like, he done did everything. Like, he doesn't have to be hungry. Like, I, I can well, see why. he don't have to prove himself. He doesn't. <clears throat> so it's like, you can get someone to help you out because it's like, you already done proved to people that you're the best. Well, I'm not saying he's the best. Don't kill me. I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. Because you got to watch it. As a matter of fact, first of all, you have a podcast with Chicle, right? Yeah. Tell us about that because I, then I want to I wanna get into something else. Tell us about your, your, your podcast. Yeah. So our podcast is called That's Your Reality. Okay. Uh, and it's about, the, it's about life. Okay. What you're going through, any fun things happening, fun conversations, little comedy mixed in it. And the the main thing about it was just about how you have your reality, I have my reality. We're both experiencing this together. But they're like yours is not less wrong than mine. Mm -hmm. It's not one over the other, but they're just two different versions of it. So that was the um, consensus of it. It came from us arguing, too, because we would have... Two different stories to this to one argument um so it really inspired us and now it's just like very fun is involving you know we talk about a whole bunch of different things um pop culture manifesting life goals aspirations and, and it's funny let's be some funny ass people that that's important because i feel like even not just in relationships but in life is like you have to understand like people have their own reality mm -hmm. and sometimes i feel like you'll get into an argument or you'll get mad at someone it's like but you don't even know where their mind was like their perception of something is completely different and if you at least heard their side of the story you may not agree with it mm -hmm. but you can understand why they felt a certain way yeah so how do you deal with comments like social media youtube comments how do you deal with those we were talking about how people were hating on your performance mm -hmm. how do you deal with that because a lot of the comments be negative yeah it's more negative than positive but how do you deal with that now i'm at a place where i'm laughing at them okay like i'm laughing i'm laughing at the comment like the the comments under my rap video like chiclet was like i don't know why you listen like why you reading it and i was <laughs> like because it's funny because you know i have fun in the studio like and a lot of the times, like, especially in today's world, like, people are so quick to take things and put them in different, like, in a different light, you know? And if I get triggered by your fucking opinion, bro, it's just your opinion. It's just a comment. Like, I'm not even going to mm -hmm. be like, oh, fuck out of Don't get me wrong. I have. Like, there's been moments where I'd be like, fuck out of here. You think you're low? <laughs> the last bitch. You over here in my comments. You're looking stupid right now. Blocked. <laughs> Send Melanie's team. Melanie, get him. <laughs> you know? I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. Because now I realize it's just an opinion. Mm -hmm. And it's not as deep. 
It's not it's not that true. It right. only really bothers you if you're like insecure about the thought. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I felt like for me at least, you know? How did how did you get there? How did you get to that point? Mm, I'm always shifting. Mm-hmm. Cuz there was a moment where I was I, I like in the beginning I didn't care when like six years ago when we first started, I wasn't invested in the content, like in the comments. Mm-hmm. Chicle was, but I wasn't. And then I started creating more content, like me creatively. And then I got invested in the comments because I cared about what other people mm-hmm. thought, like their opinion of my content. Um, so yeah, I would get triggered by shit. And then I don't, I don't even know how I got here to this like comedic route of the comments. I guess the part of me is just like, you kind of need those comments. Start a conversation. It helps get, get into the algorithm. So a little birdie told me that you be doing pottery. Get out of here. What you be doing like the whole ghost thing? <laughs> like that, is that what you be doing? Uh, what the whole thing? Oh. Ooh. Who is it? Entree. Come on, it's great. You know, I got keys in here. Oh, girl. shit. Entree. Oh, what's going on? Hold on, it really hold on. came through. Fine. Well, how long has it been? Too long. You took too long. long. <laughs> too long. What's up? What's going yeah. on? Yeah. Thank you for having I like this energy. That's right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is where I go ahead. Don't tell self. Latinos in the yeah. building, yeah. baby. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, See, today you could just say Ricardo, Ricardo. Oh, oh Ricardo you, you Ricardo today. today. Ricardo today, man. Ricardo. Oh, okay. Ricardo, you know, okay. primo. Well, Come thank on, you man. for joining us. You know, I know you probably wanted a snack, but they all expired. Damn. So we're going to sit here hungry. That's not, that's like I on my block right now, man. You know, all the candy and his shit is... You, you ever been to one of the spots, the corner stores, the whole window was yellow, you oh, know? Oh, yeah, 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 where well, everything is expired. Everything Nobody expired. That's where he got all this shit. The right. front. The best I could do was water. Not my dumb ass not even paying attention to all the groceries in here. Yeah. <laughs> and all of them are expired. Yeah. I think maybe, maybe the Twix that we have over there is still good. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know. Like it's ew. like why? Yeah, and it ew. has green gook in it, so ew. I don't know. Nah, yeah, 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 see, yeah. I knew to say ill. No, you should All of it. We go pass for sure. We were just talking about. Well, so Maleni, she is on the Impact New York VH1. Yes, I saw. And you know, okay, so you know, and you know her from the skits that she does with her Absolutely. fiance Chikle. So we were getting into it. We done spoke a lot, but we were talking about her pottery because she be in here like you know the movie Ghost. You, you do pottery? pottery? Yeah, pottery. I do pottery. That's erotic. That's really erotic. Erotic? Whoa! <laughs> That's erotic. You don't, you don't, you don't know yeah, about that? Yeah, but that was like... It's erotic, though, man. Oh, okay. I, I think I heard that's a, that's a really good couple type of situation. I've like, never done it with Chicle. You no, should. No, no. Yeah. Y'all gotta do a skit like that. Yo, I try to help him. That mom. Y'all gotta do it might go like crazy, that. too. It, yeah. It'll go crazy. It should just fly all <laughs> over the place real quick. Shout out do that. Yeah. <laughs> Now look, we putting people that next thing you know is gonna be like how paint and sip is. Now they gonna yeah. be doing that. That's coming pottery from apartment five age, yeah. I mean, pottery and sip, yeah, might get a little crazy. Yeah. It might. I got five dollars. He's talking about erotic. I don't know. You gotta I'm be scared. Crazy. Yo, I <laughs> mean, isn't scared. that like remember they were sitting in the movie? No, yeah, I mean I referenced it, but the whole erotic thing, like. I'm not gonna lie to you, I never seen the movie Ghost. You never seen Ghost? No. Wow. Who's in it? Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze. Who was shorty? Demi Moore. Demi, Demi Moore. Demi Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah, Whoopi. That's definitely a classic. I'm smacking. But see, what year did it come come out in? What was that? Whoa, whoa, whoa! She about to age shame us. Uh, nah, nah. I saw it on Netflix. I saw it on Netflix. I saw it on Netflix two weeks ago. Uh, I, saw it on Netflix. <laughs> I saw it on Channel Eleven on Sundays with the commercials. Ow. That movie turned into a nice three hours right there. You there sure did. Yeah. But you have to, no, you have to watch. So when I was saying you do the ghost, like mm-hmm. you were laughing, you ain't even know what I was I didn't even know what you was talking about. Wow, you are an actress. Thank really? you. Uh, <laughs> You're a real New Yorker. That's really like a, uh, And a New Yorker. Yeah. I, I like to pretend like I'm going along until I get enough context to then tell you like, yeah, I don't know what you were talking about. Yeah. Nah, you did, you did really well. I usually can see through that shit. You did very well. <laughs> or the other thing is just when you get to a point where you just like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> she ain't even do that though, that's what I'm saying. That's she right. made it believable. If right. she did that, I'd have been like, okay, so you don't know you what I'm talking about. Talk no, she Nothing really went about. with it. She's very good. You're very good. <laughs> Thank you. You have a very bright future in acting. <laughs> oh, because I made her believe I knew about the movie. Because oh. I see through that shit, yeah. but you did really well. But don't don't you feel like New Yorkers are, are natural actors in a way? Like it, New York State is big. New people in New York City. Mm-hmm. A, I think they're natural actors because we got to put on a face every time we walk out of our door Mm -hmm. right but then I also think that could be real that's that might feel natural for you because of all the skits that you've been doing like a lot of your followers they believe you make us laugh you Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying so 
Do you find it to be like a hard transition? No, I find it like a different version of myself. Okay. Like I'm just I'm just showing that I'm I'm pulling out that side of me. Mm-hmm. Not like I'm being somebody else. Gotcha. So it's I'm still this is still me at the end of the day. Do you how how is it for you taking direction from people? Have you gotten to that point whether it be acting, coaches or you know whether you're, you're really really acting? Have you done anything like off Broadway or something like that? Off Broadway? No. But I have um my background was dance. So coaching right. like being coach is like second nature for me. Yeah. And like I find it um, it helps, you know, mm-hmm. to have somebody on the outside to be like, oh, this is what you're doing wrong. This is what you need to be doing. Um, I'd rather that, though. But now they're, they're not telling you what you're doing wrong because of the times we in. Mm-hmm. They, they won't tell you that, like, you're doing everything great. Folk, like, try it this way. Mm-hmm. Now, nah, tell me what the fuck I did wrong. Like, I look stupid doing that shit right mm-hmm. there. Like, you know, I like that bluntness, but I think that's just how I grew up. And like the teachers I had in the past who just kept it above. Cause you know, being in East New York, I had a teacher who dead ass, and like she told me, like, well, this ain't got nothing to do with the story I was telling, but it's a life lesson that she told me. Mm-hmm. She, I couldn't do this like jump. And this, I was like eight, in eighth grade. Couldn't do this jump. And, and I said, I can't do it. And she said, don't ever say you can't. You can. But she always gave me that tough love of mm-hmm. like, Melanie. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Like, even recently when the show aired, she she wrote me a DM and she was so, how proud she was. And I was like, wow, I love that. But I'm 30 and she's still keeping tabs on me. Yeah, but that also <laughs> shows the connection, man, yeah. how important it is. Oh, That's no, dope. yeah. She saw, she seen me grow. She was my teacher for about, um, I want to say about four years. Because even when I was in high school, I was still training while her, going there after school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Having a teacher that, like, really inspired you. Yeah, I used to have a lot of teachers like that. They usually kick me out of class and shit, but I still, you know. I can't see you getting mind. kicked out. You're like such out. a like a calm, <laughs> cool guy. Like it took time you to get here. Really? It took time to get here. No, you don't. You don't see all the jokes he got. Though that was him disrupting the class. Absolutely. He got kicked out. That, for that makes shit. sense. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That makes sense. Is that what he it was? He was funny. Where you you know you and your people's coming to the class, and next thing you know. He all the way over there. Now you got to be all the way in the front mm-hmm. or something like that. That was me. You know, I used to get kicked out every once in a while. I can't believe that's that. hilarious. I feel like you're always like just chill. Just I've gotten again. kicked out, but I feel like people could believe that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Have I got kicked out? I don't know if I. I can't remember when if I got kicked out. I was I was definitely the talkative one though. Like every parent teacher conference. Her grades are great, but <laughs> this bitch don't know how to shut the fuck up. Like, she don't. Yeah. Those um, are always the successful ones. Look at me. That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. I'm successful. You are mm-hmm. No, you are. I mean, you have a lot going for yourself. Yeah. Like, And this is just the beginning, I feel like, for you. I think that it's going to continue to grow for you. If you could be in a movie with anyone, who would it be? Mm, that's a good mm. question. If I could be in a movie, it would be Will Ferrell. Interesting. Yeah, I, I would love to do something with Will Ferrell. I can see that. I think he would definitely outshine me though in comedy, but I think he would teach me so much and like will bring a different side of me out. Um, Anne Hathaway, I would love to do something with Anne. Hathaway. Really? <clears throat> That's interesting. I didn't see that but one I, coming. Yeah, I love me some Anne. Oh. I love me Anne. And I love the work that she's been doing recently. Like it's been very serious yeah. instead of like the rom com mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? Who else? I low key, no funny, because I want to do action comedy. I would like to do something with The Rock. With The Rock. I knew yeah. she was going to say The Rock. I was. I was going to say Kevin Hart too, but I was at the, the Rock. Maybe you could be in something with them. You know, yeah, they usually right. do movies together. Together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can see you being the female lead in that trio. Yeah. I, I was watching that. Jumanji. I was like, that. No funny, Jumanji as a movie. Like, the fact that all four of them had to be different people. Like, they have to mm-hmm. rotate and act different versions. I was like, damn, that is such. Like, skill as an actor like forget the beginning shit what they teach you about like just showing up as yourself like now nah, you have to show up and you have to be distinctly different mm-hmm. than that version of yourself i so think with, with the first one with will farrell mm-hmm. like you have this uh i believe there's a lot of things that you could learn mm-hmm. but there's a lot of things that you're born with like timing 
mm-hmm. improv, you know what I'm saying, improvisation. You just kind of like on the fly. Oh, this is what we're doing? All right, boom, I'll just jump into this. Mm-hmm. So I think you would do well with that. Thank I mean, you. this is the stuff that you're doing every, and it's mm-hmm. like, I'm just doing this because it's me. Before, mm-hmm. it's like lights, camera, action, scripts, all that shit. It's just naturally there. So I think it'd be good for you. Thank you. Write, write, tell them, write them a letter and just. Oh yeah, yeah. Know, Don't worry. Know? I got people. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a few phone calls. You know what I'm saying? Next right. time I'm outside on the red carpet, yo, you see her? Yeah. yeah you, look at that. Yeah, 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 her, yo, her, 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 her. Bro, bro. Right. Tell them not. Tell them not. I got you. Don't worry about it. Got you. <laughs> you ever think about taking a trip to LA? I Let's need to. <laughs> Everyone, my man's told me that, and I, a part of me be stubborn. Because I feel like I could do it without going over there. Because there's a lot going on in here. There is. There and I is. feel like before I need to go over there, I think there's a lot that I could utilize just being from New York. Because there is like shows that are New York based that I could focus That's on true. here without feeling like I need to go over there and network. And I'm trying to think of this. Uh, how can I say this? All right, so you know how here in New York City, we got a basketball court everywhere. As mm-hmm. soon as you walk outside, the basketball over, court. Over everywhere. there. Over there, what I'd say is like you have studios all over the place. There's all kind of productions going on. The productions that we have here in New York City, they're a little bit more focused on like this one particular thing or maybe these two particular things. Over there is just like constant mm. production, script writing, people getting together, collabing, trying to figure out new stuff. And the other thing that I noticed, not that I know a lot about LA, I just came back from there two weeks ago, though, slight flex. Um, <laughs> well, what, I, what, I will, what I will say is that you have like that New York energy. Mm-hmm. As soon as we step into that, they mm-hmm. feel it. Mm-hmm. They feel it right away. And we also noticed there's a like, I, what I've noticed over there is that there's a big change on how they operate it. So mm-hmm. like you, how we walk a million miles a minute, they slow it down a little bit more. For lunch, they go to the beach. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Their days kind of slow down around 2 p.m. and stuff like that. For yeah. us, we're just like, go, 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 go. So I think if you were to bring your energy over there, it could be good. Come back home, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But go over there, pop your face, yeah. so they see you. you know? Yeah, you're right, you're right. You know what? Just because you told me, I'm going to book a flight. And now <laughs> because fan. I said it, I'm going to have to, even though I was joking in the beginning, but now I actually said it, so now I dope, have to do dope. it. Dope, yeah, dope. Yeah. 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 Let me know when you go so I could try to get some points off that, too. Yeah, all right, oh, sure. sounds good. Not, not points with, like, actors and shit like that, like, hi- hotel and... Airline. I knew I'm you meant crying. that. I knew you meant I that. Need, I knew it. I need to. I be telling everybody, <laughs> yo, when are you going? <laughs> give me the confirmation of me. Let me try to go ahead and get some points off you. <laughs> not, I'm using the points for myself. I got here. I, I didn't know we know or not, so I need the points. I need the points. But for real, I think I definitely think you should yeah. go out. No, there. I'm gonna definitely make the move. Whether I do like a month or two, like I think I need to stay there for yeah. a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna check it out. I mean, it may or may not be for you. A lot of New Yorkers they move there. They don't like it. They come back. Yeah, yeah. I love L.A. personally. I, I love it. I think it's like you have that city feel. And it's like Rizzy said, it's like, but it's slow. Like you go there and it's like you, you're not. And then since the East Coast shuts down three hours ahead of time, yeah. by 5 p.m., nobody is calling you. Like you have the rest mm. of your day to chill. It's amazing. I love L.A. Yeah. I love it. I don't know. The thing with me in L.A. is I, because we have boroughs, and over there they don't. Mm-hmm. It kind of it kind of freaks me out, like mm. what because mean? it's just a whole big thing of land. Like imagine this all being L.A. Mm-hmm. and then there's mountains around you. So now I just feel like I'm <laughs> in like a claustrophobic kind yeah, of way. But, yeah. but that's when you get with some good L.A. peoples and you know they take right. you around. Mm-hmm. Like you know we I, I guess for us we have our defined areas, right? Yeah. So you know Brooklyn, Bronx, Manhattan, Queens. Staten Island, you know what I'm saying? Like we we have our defined areas, but yeah. it's, it's the same thing over there. It's just for us to kind of figure out, oh, what's this side? What's this side? What do you do over here? Oh, mm-hmm. this is where all the kickbacks are. This is where the after hours is. One thing I know about LA though is you gotta choose where the fuck you're going. Yes. When it's time to go out. Yes. Because you won't make it to both. It's yeah. not like you gotta, choose. you gotta choose. It's hard to hop. Because it's hard to get yeah. from one side to the other yes. side. Traffic yeah, is crazy. Uh, yeah, because he in New York, you can dead ass get anywhere in 30 minutes with these highways. For, for real. And or even know. walk. Like, you just like, boop, boop. I'll be quick yeah. to jump on a train. I ain't that bougie yet. Yeah. I'll just be like, yo, I'll see y'all in a few. <laughs> the coming. train scare me yeah, now. I'll it depends on the, on the train. Like, it depends on the route. Yeah. Sometimes, like, you can't get to Brooklyn to Queens on a train. Like, well, you think you that's a good like question. That. Like, are you are you still able to, I, do you ride the train first? I do. I get on the LIRR. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, well, that's not a that's, that's a bougie, bougie train. Yeah, that's that's a bougie train, though. They got yeah. another on the seat. I take one. I take it one stop from thirty fourth <laughs> to forty second. Yo, you take the L I double R from thirty fourth to forty second. No, I, the L I double R takes you to Penn Station. Right. That's on thirty fourth. Then I gotta go to Times Square, so I get on the train on the E train, the E C or the A. Oh, copy, copy. And copy. then I take it one stop. Okay, okay. There was a man playing the hand pan. Gave him a dollar. Because it was beautiful. That should be sounding good, though. He put right? me in a nice place. Yeah. Also, the two notes that I heard him say. Some talented, play. talented people on the mm-hmm. ground they in really New York do City. Some man. talented people, though. I'm really trying to find a violinist in the train station. Mm. Do you remember the guy that was, uh, what were you saying? Unchained Melody? You remember the, Do you remember? It? He had a booming voice. It was a man. I forgot he was like. He played uh, the violin? No, no, no. Oh, he was singing. <laughs> she find, she won a violin, to, okay? I'm trying to find a violinist, violinist. from my wedding. That's why, who plays like pop. Music. Ooh, I got oh. someone. I'm going to send you someone. Tell me, yeah. I'm going to send you someone. Send me someone. His name is Damien Escobar. Okay. He's really talented. He's dope. All right. I'm going to check him out. Why, why a violin for the wedding? Though? Why I just specifically? always love... I love a violin. I wish I could play a violin. Like, that would be one intr- instrument that since I was younger, I would have loved to play. Mm. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, the budget was not there for my parents to put me in music. That shit is it's expensive. I learned how to play the ukulele when I was in college, though. Oh, really? That's not the same. Nah. It's not. I mean, you, you could just say this. I play a stringed instrument. Let, uh, let, yeah. let them think what they want to think. It's the same family. It's like the cousin of yeah. the violin. Like, whatever like, they want to think. I play a stringed instrument. Yeah, you're right. Full stop. That Don't say nothing right. else. That's it. <laughs> For Don't one semester. That's, that's it. it. Don't say nothing <laughs> else. It's really nice, though. Yeah. That's but I've always, yeah, I've always had this love for a violin. And it sounds so beautiful. And then you ever seen them put, like pop it up? Mm-hmm. 10 out of 10 on the ambiance, on the vibe. Yeah, they be getting aggressive. Yeah. They be like, yeah. they be getting aggressive. Playing the pop songs, little Ed Sheeran in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't let them start plucking the key. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a, I'm a, that's going to be a treat yourself. Yeah. And, I, and I'm going to be a part of my cocktail hour. You got me fucked up if you thought I wasn't. Have, have you done auditions for them yet? No. You should do that. I, this was me asking people. Yeah. <laughs> She needs, she needs a violin. She needs a violin. This was it. Yeah. I didn't even post it on my gram yet to ask. How, well, how much time do we have? What you got? Date-wise. You about to play? Oh, is it? Is in um September. September. This All September? Right. Yeah. September. Oh, we gotta get them auditions. We gotta get we them. Gotta, yeah, 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 yeah. Next top model. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no, that's not the right. Yeah. No, X Factor. Right. X Factor. X Factor. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> pull up, pull up. You gotta have your violin. Oh, I never watched that before. You never watched X Factor? No. Why you not? You never watched X Factor? You got a TV? America's yeah, I got a TV. I'm just not into it. Like X Factor's on every channel. If you sometimes. watch, I like America's, America's Got Talent either. I don't. Mm. I don't. There's some talented people in there, and you missing out. I might be. I might be. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I don't watch like Mask Singer. Like I don't, I don't watch, watch any Mask of that Singer either. But Mask Singer is pretty interesting too. Yeah. Because you got guests who the artist is behind that mask. I'm not going to lie, though. I usually watch this in, like, other people's homes. Like, I really won't turn to it myself. But if I'm passing by, I'll sit down for you a second. You TV shaming it. me, and you don't even watch <laughs> it like I that. It, <laughs> you know of it. it. You didn't ask about specifics. I've watched it, though. I mean, I've seen it on other people's screen, too. That qualifies. But you didn't know mm-hmm. about X Factor? Nah, I really didn't know the <laughs> like, yeah. I can't even. Yeah. X Factor is basically just America's Got Talent. That's when they were all putting out like the same type of content with different names. Wait, am I a liar? X Factor. Oh, X Factor Isn't is that when... like a challenging, no, like no, no. a eat what? spiders type shit. That was the one where like no, Ludacris was doing fa- that. One. That's Fear, fear Factor. Fear Factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that is. That's yeah. Fear Factor. Okay, that I've seen that. But yeah. X Factor is when they have the chairs and the buzzer and they turn around. No, that's the voice. That okay, mm. confusing that. I but yes, really, X- I don't think you really watch it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I got you. I got you. X Factor is basically America's Got Talent, but it's not. <laughs> That's what it is. Okay. <laughs> Real All ones right. know. It's like, it's like American Idol is like all of these shows, okay. yeah. but it's not. But it's not. Real ones know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She so, said it. Like everything she it's said. It's like the two beat of sense. American Idol? No. Nah. All right. I'm just no, like, no, no, when, no, no. When, what, what's the name? When Simon. Cow. I when think he, Simon was a part of X Factor. Yeah, he, and then he was like, fuck y'all, I'm dipping. And he made America's he made Got Talent. Own. Yeah. And he was like, I'm big dog in this here. He I'm first chair. Kind of like, he, somehow he was involved with all of them. Of like, course he, came he was. Over from the UK. Of and course he, he was. Doing, I think about American Idol. Then he, he stopped mm-hmm. American Idol. He started something else. And he said, you know what? I'm out on this. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He was kind of part of all of that. So was Ryan Seacrest. That's what Pop Ryan Seacrest was. Yeah, I didn't know. 
uh, with American I know Island. he hosted one. He, hosted. he used to host it. This the fuck. This the crazy part, and I know this is way off fucking track, but <laughs> the crazy part about that show is that there used to be two hosts on American Idol. It was it was Ryan with blonde hair, yeah. and then it was a guy that had brown hair, like darker brown hair. You don't hear nothing oh, about really the other really dude. Really I don't even know what happened to the other dude. Mm-hmm. Honest, but everything is Ryan Seacrest now. Poor guy, because I don't even know who that man he is. Might you don't know Ryan Seacrest? No, I know who he is, but the brown heads are like, the I brown don't even know who he's brown I feel like I remember his face vaguely. He probably got but bought I out. Be he was like, yo, all right, just, just give me like 3% up bounce. Crying, if that. Maybe. Do they even get that as a host? Probably not. I don't think Not so. that early in the game. <laughs> I was just trying to give him some hope. You trying to give him something. Yeah. It's a nice give him, guy. Give him a, a nice story guy. or something. He went out, you know. You're a nice you know, guy. He went out with a check. Yeah, <laughs> man. He had a check. He was probably living in somewhere in Malibu right now, chilling. Damn, we don't even know it. If you do go to L.A., mm-hmm. I'm switching back to L.A. really quickly. If you do go to L.A., there's a spot that has, you, you like tacos. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You like beady tacos? You had, me, you had you had me at you like. <laughs> like yeah. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> do you like beady tacos? I do, I do. With no, cheese they, though. Well, I'm about to blow your mind. Mm-hmm. They have beady French fries. Get out of here. Okay. With cheese on it? Yeah, and it gets dirty. Ooh. So that's another reason for you to go to LA. But you were judging me with pottery. You heard how you heard how you just said? Yeah, you say it gets dirty. It gets dirty. You say it gets dirty. It was like it was just like this. When it comes to good uh, food, she was like, that it gets dirty. It gets dirty. dirty. No, beating our French fries are very dirty. It's amazing. (laughs) Is someone watching this podcast right now? Little things in life that turned me on, okay? Like, going so media French fries, okay? Oh, I'll be in the house, all okay, right? Okay, how about this? I'm a little ignorant. What, what, what's the name of it? Bedia? Bedia. What, what is that? Why, how That's is like that the prepared? shredded beef. So you've shredded seen the tacos beef. that have, like, they're, yes. they're fried up with, okay. the, with the shredded beef, and then you dip them. In the sauce? When they're in his mouth in the sauce. Ooh, okay. They got right. French fries out. And they have Bedia burritos. Mm-hmm. So it gets even dirtier. Mm-hmm. So another reason for you to go to L.A. Just for the food. I mean, your career I love too. Going, but... I love going to LA. That's just the only thing that makes me anxious about being in LA. Because I don't know, I don't know where to go. I don't know the separation. It's just like Hollywood and then Burbank and then West Hollywood. Mm, Culver City. Yeah. yeah. The Beverly water. Hills. And then the water so far. Why the water so far? <laughs> go down and go to Venice. Water, water, yeah. That's go so down far. to Long Beach. But it's a vibe. Santa Monica. It's we're gonna see. We're gonna see her in LA in about like two months. Yeah. yeah Maybe yeah. before that. Maybe before that. Yeah. Before that. I gotta go over there for like a good month. Ain't nothing like I would I'm say. Go sooner. My dog. Just don't go. Well, take your dog. You got a big dog or a little yeah, dog? Yeah, I got a big dog. What type what of dog? She's a husky. She's mixed with uh, Malamu oh, yeah. and some more. I don't think I've ever seen so your dog like, on the social. Get out I be, of here. I don't even your social medias. You know. I be posting. Oh. With, I, mean, I don't remember seeing the dog. I don't even know where my cellular vest. device at. We have to help you order oh. a vest off of what Amazon. What am I doing with my purse? What they say, service dog. Get one of those. I, I swear, girl, when I girl, see people on that. When I talk, it's like, oh, I girl, see people on the plane. Like, this should be saying. Do you do you still hear? Cut. You still hear Melanie? I think. Let me see, Mama. Do you think my mic? Oh, okay. Okay, because um, it's tucked in. We still good? Should I? Okay. Okay. Time in. <laughs> All right, let me show you. See, the thing about winter, winter? is... Yeah, that's her name, winter. But I say winter, because, you know, I'm from... Well, yeah, we all say winter. Yeah. We try to... Is... Winter, but... <gasps> oh, she's, yeah, she's definitely she's winter. She's beautiful. Mm. She's a beautiful dog. Look at her eyes. She has oh the two eyes. The two color eyes, right? She's beautiful. So she is. Oh, my God. I love the way you spelled it. With yeah. the H yeah. at the end. Because that's you... how I say it. Oh, you got to just give her a bus. <laughs> But the thing is that she not trained. That bitch ain't no service dog. She gonna snitch me out. She gonna go crazy. Come on now. She try to have her sit on the she, seat. She see another Over service dog and she gonna try to play with the service dog. And I'm like, oh, sis. <laughs> so you, it's relax. five hours. Yo, you making five, it, six you hours. You making it hot, bro. Super hot right now. We got to go to the bathroom and talk this out. She's good. I just, you know, it's me. It's me. She's just, just alarmed. <laughs> Come on. Nah, I need to find a semi-private plane or something. I, I heard that they have those. They do. You can fly with your dog. Yeah. They do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we see you do a skit with that, we know you have arrived. Like, that's super, super bougie right there. What do you there. mean? With a semi-private? Just to be private with, with just your, with your, dog? your dog? Just your dog. Yeah, you already know. I'm going to post that on the gram when I get my you. dog on the flight. Because I'm not putting her under. I'm sorry. I, I do that. Dogs that. Dogs that. do that? 
Yeah, they I mean, do. If you have that? like bigger dogs, like yeah, and you want to travel with them, they put them under. Yeah. Oh, I didn't not, know. No, no, like put them under the. No, no, I ain't doing the plane. That. I'm not playing. Yeah. I thought you was talking about sedation, my bad. Oh no, 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 no. You get them high. What, what happened? <laughs> nah, I'm not. Give them a little CBD. I'm not putting. Nah, I ain't putting my dog under the plane. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. That was the only thing I wish she was a little smaller. Twenty pounds lighter, she would have been. Let's go. Where we out? Wow. I would've been in L.A. real quick. Took my old dog with me. I what? just be feeling bad when I leave a family. What about doggy oh. daycare? You do doggy daycare? I don't want to leave. No, I'd rather leave with my family then. Oh, okay. That's the case. Well, that's good. So you have like a supportive like, oh, okay. I do. I just don't like them to get confused. You know, you leave your dogs with yeah. for a long period of time. Oh, a month. Get depressed. It becomes a dead dog. Yeah. yeah. My dog, Winter also, she's childish. She won't eat. Mm. She cha- She like, the minute she don't see me for about a week, she's like, I She go on strike? Yeah, where's, where's my they do owner? that. They do that. I had a pit bull, and where's my one time at? we left him with someone. He would not eat. It was mm-hmm. like three days. He would not eat. Yeah, he's they unsettled. Do that. Mm-hmm. I don't know about your family. That's not a good sign because in my family, just started like fuck, fuck the dog food. We go and start feeding the dog our food. It doesn't matter. He just won't eat. Good, he just would not oh, eat. Oh no, he did not care. He would be that sad. Yeah. Now I had a Chihuahua. That bitch didn't give a fuck about me. <laughs> okay, She's I dope. left home with my mom, and I came back. I think it was only like three or four days. And that bitch gained mad weight. She had mad farina. Like, oh my god! I had to put her on a diet. Who's feeding your dog farina? My mother. Yeah, farina mother. is crazy. You know I love farina. I love yeah. it too, but why give it to my chihuahua? Like, That's why? crazy. Like, why? I would never. You talking give about like the hot cereal in the morning? Yes. Your mother fe- fed your dog that? Farina, yes. <laughs> That's crazy, yo. Yeah. That's wild. That's like grits, guy. Like, I know. I know. <laughs> Trust me, I had to put her on a yeah. diet. I never thought I'd have to put my chihuahua on a diet. Yo, crazy. You just super no, dry snitch on your mother, too. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's <laughs> that was not a dry snitch. That was, a, that was a snitch snitch. That was a snitch, <laughs> that was, snitch you know what? I should not have done that because yeah. I don't. I, I'm wow. very, I feel very strongly about snitching. You know? Wow. Yeah. I'm very strongly about that. So wow. you're welcome. Um, but so tell us what can, what, what can we expect from Melanie in the future? What can y'all expect? Y'all can expect me on a big screen. Not talking about the impact New York, because y'all already expect me on the big screen right there. Absolutely. But to keep making everyone proud, even myself, in terms of acting and making a name for myself in the industry and breaking straws, knocking down doors. Yeah, that's what you can expect. Yeah. And then more pottery on millennimade.com. Please watch Ghosts. Yeah, I will, I will. And I don't mean power, I mean Ghosts, the movie. <laughs> okay? I will, I I'm going to check in on you. I'm going to give you a month. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. She looked at me in my eyes like I'm not watching it, but I'm no, 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 no. I'm gonna watch it because you know what it is. Now that I'm acting, no, not now that I'm acting, but watching TV, watching shows is like taking a class now because I'm oh. watching how, how, like how they're performing, like the choices they make. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you learn a lot by watching other people. So no, for sure, I'm gonna definitely watch it. You know that's where like the term comes to you. I'm ghost. You know, oh, she was ghost and stuff. That's where it comes from. Yeah, that movie. Yeah. yeah. Now, see, now or, I know. Or if you listen to a rhyme and you be like, yo, we Swayze. Okay. So my Patrick says Swayze and Ghost. Yeah. Oh. So you know, yeah. I got you, man. Come on, apartment teaching. five. I got you, man. So I got you. watch Ghost, and I need you and Chicle to do a skit exactly <laughs> like what we're talking about. Yeah. After you see it, you're going to understand why. All right, I got I you. need that, okay? <laughs> I, got, I think I know what CD is talking about. When someone's behind the person and they're like mad intimate with the pottery. Yes. I think I've seen the scene, but I've never seen the movie. This is what we I'm talking that. about, son. We need that, okay? okay? Like ASAP, we need that from y'all, okay? <laughs> we should do that on Valentine's Day. I man. got you. Look at that, another idea. On yeah. Valentine's Look, we just up here giving you ideas. Yeah. We can't wait to see what you have next. Yes. Oh, thank you. Everyone man. tap in VH1, 9 p.m to see Melanie on your TV screens yeah. and watch out for all these things that she has coming up. Yes, thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, make sure you watch That's Your Reality and listen to it and check out our merch, Shadow Band. That's what I got. We're going to put all the links in the YouTube video so you'll see you'll be able to tap, tap, tap in. Tap, 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 tap. <laughs>